Hello, my name is Christopher Cutts. We're at the Christopher Cutts Gallery, and presently I'm hosting an exhibition by Ray Johnson, Light and Darkness. This is uh, part two of uh, two shows that we have featuring the paintings of Ray Johnson. Part one happened in 2020 called Angels and Monsters, which featured her uh, figurative base work. And now part two is a look at uh, Ray's landscape paintings. And right now you can see me by this monumental landscape painting called Green Sky. This happened to be executed in Flesherton where Ray and her family lived for several years. They bought a property there in, in the 80s. And that's when Ray started to make uh, landscape paintings. So this is actually the Flesherton Pond, as you can see in this large green sky over here. And this idea of these multi-panels, that comes from uh, when Ray and her, uh, her husband, uh, Clark, were, bought a property up in Flesherton and they were in an old barn and they saw these large panels and uh, she got the idea about having a carpenter make more panels that were similar to that and to uh, paint on. And she, uh, she liked that the surface being rigid, unlike a canvas, so she could really scrape into it. We're looking at another large format painting from the late 80s called Cloud Break. This is also uh, the Flesherton Pond. You can see the curvature of the pond. So this is uh, the property that uh, Ray was, lived in on for a number of years. I particularly like this painting. There's something almost uh, um, cartoonish about the way the clouds are, and I guess he calls it Cloud Breaks as, for that very reason. Um, they're not quite Simpsons clouds, but uh, have that element of them with the, the blue sky and the, the fluffy cumulus clouds uh, parting their way. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is Ray was saying when she made these paintings, you can see they're, they're monument in scale, but she actually had point, put brushes on long poles and she would gaffer tape them to them. And so she could make these things and she wanted to stay away from them and move them very gesturally you know, going back and forth. This is called Green Swoop. And as you can see, it's, uh, uh, I grew up in Winnipeg, so I'm quite familiar with that part of the world. And if you go a little bit north of town, often in the summertime, you would have the, the northern lights. And that's what she's uh, playing with right now as you're looking over. This would be uh, Lake Winnipeg, and then, of course, this green swoop is the Northern Lights. It's a magical piece. Now, Ray said, unlike um, uh, the earlier works, landscape works of the late 80s, where she actually put poles on brushes and stayed away, she says these ones, she got right into them. Ray did a lot of two-by-two two sketches on plywood. This is a, actually looks like three-quarter inch plywood. It says heavy-duty plywood. So this is, she worked directly on these. This is from the early 90s. You know, the very painterly approach. Ray said that actually when she first started doing these paintings, she did them in secret because she was known for these sort of urban nightmares, she called these interiors of uh, nightlife in Toronto in the uh, early 80s and so and she thought well nobody was going to take me seriously if I was out making these um, you know spiritual uh, landscape paintings. Um, another thing that kind of pushed her towards wanting to paint the landscape she had a desire to do so you know she's surrounded by nature and how wonderful and beautiful it is but um, at this point in her career she had two young daughters and she says I just didn't want to paint these sort of depressing psychological deep uh, investigations of people late nights at uh, the bar and stuff. She said, I wanted to paint things that were more uplifting. And uh, so she did a lot of these and a lot of larger format ones. This is another um, Winnipeg, Lake Winnipeg painting. It's called Firebird. Uh, I guess for obvious reasons, you've got this fiery sky of dusk or dawn. Um, you know, in conclusion, I. Uh, we lost Ray in, in 2020, and um, uh, before she passed, we talked about doing these two shows, and um, the first one, Angels and Monsters, uh, uh, 
uh, Ray was still with us, but unfortunately she passed away during that exhibition. And um, it's been a great celebration and a great honor for me to be able to host uh, uh, Ray's um, two shows. And um, she's gonna be sorely missed. Uh, she was loved as a teacher at OCA and um, she was a, a mentor to many and, uh, and a, a terrific artist, uh, a catalyst for so many things, a founder of Chromosome and um, well we lost a good one here but uh, luckily uh, she left uh, a legacy.